गुड इवनिंग Good evening my name is Dele Ayemibo and um I'm starting a new live series live video series on Facebook and I'm basically talking about um transiting from paid employment to self employment in export business transiting from paid employment to self employment in export business um I will have about 17 things to talk about um i won't be able to finish it in one video probably in series i don't know how soon it will be maybe like 20 20 minutes every day um so i will be looking at the preamble today if i'm able to finish we will, we will go to prospect then after that we discuss the product then the processes then the problem then the possibilities and lastly i'll be talking about how to participate Remember I'm talking to self employed paid employed uh, people that's people that are in employment currently working somewhere and you have the mind of starting your own export business. And that's why I talk about transiting from paid employment to self employment in export business. You know when you talk about business generally some people have some concern about doing business. So here are some of the wrong conception people have. Some people will say I'm not cut out for business. Some would say doing business is risky. Some would say uh business is not for everyone some would say uh business success is about luck some would say um i do not have gift or talent to run a business some would say um i don't have marketing skill some would even say i don't know how to sell some would say i will do business when i retire some would say i don't have capital for business some would say I don't know the business to do. Uh I tend to have quite a response to some of those questions. So I'll tell you some of my responses as people as I approach people because I meet a lot of people every day um who are in paid employment who believe they are being locked down and they are not able to manifest their potential and they really are thinking of what to do and they want to go into business. So that's why this one is transiting from paid employment to self employment in export business. transition from paid employment to self employment in export business. So, I'm not cut out for business. So, here's my response to such people. I said, what will you do if you retire at 60 and you die at 90? You are going to be idle doing nothing for the next 30 years. So, that's to tell you that business really is not just about making money. It's actually about life generally. Engagement, being impactful beyond just making money. Business is not for everyone. But my question to my response to that is in the agrarian age many have to trade what they have to get what they want. So you must be trading something to get something. If there's nothing you are trading in this world, then you won't be able to get anything. So you must be trading something either good or services. So if the business is not for everyone. So if you grew up in the agrarian age, you're born in the agrarian age, are you telling me you will not be creating something to get something some would say business is about luck and someone call luck l u c k laboring under correct knowledge so if you say business is about luck you are lucky when you are laboring under correct knowledge then i don't have a talent to run a business and i tell them everyone has a gift or talent to create value for survival in the world some would say i don't like marketing and i said most things that are good or are profitable does not come easy So I said I don't know how to sell and I said nobody brought it from heaven we all learned it here. So I said business doing business is risky and I said life is self is a risky adventure. So I said I would do business when I retire and I respond do you want to spend your productive years serving others when do you intend to start your own and do something for yourself. So I would say I don't have capital and I said there's always a small way to start even for export business there's a small way to start. So I would say I don't know the business to do and I said start the product or service that is scarce in your area now still talking about preamble as far as transiting from paid employment to self employment as far as concerned i want you to understand that there's something called career ladder in career ladder you start as a student from student you move on to the next level where you are on internship 
From internship, you move on to the next level when you become self-employed. From self-employed, you move on to the level when you become a business owner. From business I mean, to level to level where you become an investor. And lastly, you end up as a philanthropy. So you start as a student. Then you graduate and became self-employed. 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 So you became, you become rather an employee rather. From student you become an employee because you become self-employed. But you know what I discovered about employee? You transit from employee to self-employed either voluntarily or compulsorily via retirement, retrenchment or resignation. So at some point in your life, you transit. So you can likewise begin to plan towards it. And what I tell people is that don't let it be. Don't let it be that you transit compulsorily when they force you out. But you transit voluntarily. You transit voluntarily. Why should you transit voluntarily? So that you will have planned. So you should always have a plan. You might not leave the paid employment in another five years, in another ten years. But there should always be a plan. You know why? Because it can be terminated at any time. And don't say it's not my portion. The management of the organization can take stupid decisions that will make that student business to shut, to shut down. If that happens, are you going to be, what will you be doing? You really have to survive. So you are going to have to do something. You really have to survive. You are going to have to do something. So what will you be doing at that time? Transiting from paid employment to self-employment in export business. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is skill and competence. What's your net worth? I'm not talking about your bank account balance. Rather, I'm talking about the value you can add, the skill you have acquired, the competence you have developed, the certification you have had, the trade vocation you have learned, the problem you can solve, the problem and services you have developed, the caliber of people in your network. And this is very important for me. You know why it's very important? It's very important because if you do not have this, it becomes difficult for you to create value in business. Because when you are thinking about export, today I don't encourage people to do commodity again. Commodity is modern slavery. Commodity export is modern slavery. It does not help Africa, it will not help Africa. Commodity export is modern slavery. Now, someone is asking a question. How do I export with 150,000? 150,000. Even though I have not gotten to that point, but I can easily answer that question. Now, first of all, with 150,000, your focus should be product, I mean, value-added product. So, look for product that someone is adding value to. And discuss with people who have fantastic product locally. See how you can get that product from them to sell abroad. If the product is well packaged, if the product is well packaged, if the product is well packaged, I can help you get buyer. We have buyers in the UK, we have buyers outside the country who are interested in value added product to sell abroad. So we can assist you. So, but it has to be finished product. Like I said, a product, a product that is commodity only lead you to modern slavery. A product that is commodity only lead you to modern slavery. For me, it's unwise to invest your time, energy, and resources in commodities. Why? You know what? Commodity has kept Africans small. We have not been able to do high-value export. We have not been able to do... We have not been able to lift our people out of poverty... Because when we export commodity, we're actually exporting jobs. When you export commodity, you're actually exporting jobs. That's why I would recommend. So for Ad Adamiji Kolade, you can export 150,000 150, naira. What you need to do is to get value-added products that are very good, well-packaged. Partner with the owner of the product and see how we can help you to look for buyer abroad. Partner with him. Discover with the person you want to export this product. You need a very good price for the product. Then we can work together on it. But it has to be a very good product. It has to be a very good product. So entrepreneurship is an approach to management has been defined by some people as an approach to management that involves pursuit of opportunity without regard for resources currently controlled. So for you, if you're on a paid employment now and you're thinking of going into export uh, business after you've left your job, or maybe while you're on your job, remember this. Entrepreneurship begins with a philosophy. And the philosophy is a desire for freedom and not security. If you're listening to me and you think your friend will be of, this will be of help to your friend, 
who is thinking of transiting, because he is talking about transition, even though I'm focusing on export, you can actually apply it in other things. So you might want to share this message now to some of your friends who might be interested. I've seen one or two people that have shared it. I appreciate if you can share it to your friends and colleagues might be interested in some of these. Entrepreneurship begins with a philosophy, a desire for freedom and not security. Do you know why prison is called maximum security prison? Because the more the freedom you have, the more the security you have in life, the less your freedom. The more the security you have in life, the less your freedom. The more the security you have in life, the less your freedom. So your goal in life should not be about security. Your goal in life should be about freedom. And that's one philosophy you need to learn if you want to go into business. Especially as it relates to export. The more the security you have in life, the less freedom you have. You do not work to earn. You work to you do not work to earn. You work to learn. And when you have learned, then you can earn. So this another philosophy you must learn in business is that it's not just desire for freedom and security. Also, you are working to learn. So, for example, some people are working in trade department of a bank. Every day, documents are passing in front of them of people shipping goods in and out of Nigeria. There is a lot of opportunity there for you, my friend. You can see opportunity there for you. I used to work in a bank. I saw the opportunity in the space of training, trade education. And that's why we decided to take that advantage of that opportunity. So you, can, you must be able to take advantage of opportunity. And without regard to the resources you are currently control, don't look at how much you have. Look at that opportunity and now you can take advantage of that opportunity. So it's very important that you learn where you are working. I believe strongly that work, W-O-R-K, is where one receives knowledge. Where one receives knowledge. Where one receives knowledge. Why do I call it where one receives knowledge? Because I realize after many years in, of working, what you, the only thing that has changed in you is the knowledge you have acquired. The money they paid you, you will, you will spend it. You will finish spending that money. The only thing that will change you is the money you have acquired. So it's very important that you, sorry, the only, that, 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 the only thing that you have with you is the knowledge you have acquired, rather, is not the money that you have been paid because you will finish spending that money. Now, another thing I want to talk about, we are still talking about preamble. Remember, we are talking about transiting from paid employment to self-employment in export business. So, I'm still talking about preamble. There's something we're talking about. Like I said, to be in series, maybe every day, I'll try to look at how we can do it in the evening like this, maybe around 5, 6 p.m. in the evening, every day, talking about transition. So, you can begin to work about it and think about it as, a, as a, whatever it is you are doing on paid employment right now. The next thing is vision. Every military accomplishment begins with a vision. So you must begin to think, what do you want to do when you finish? You want to export. Because we are talking about export. What do you want to export? Where do you want to export to? What is the vision of that business you can see? You know, the challenge is this. If your focus is just about making money, that business does not have a future. But if your focus is about creating value, building a global business, then the business has a future. So you must have a vision of the business you want to have. Is it just to feed yourself or to create value for Nigeria, for Africa? You need to first use your imagination to create it before it manifests. You cannot go beyond what you see. What you see determines your decision and your direction. So what do you see in the future of that business? What do you see in the future of that business? What do you intend to achieve in the future of that business? What product do you want to sell? Which country do you want to sell it? You know, if you travel very frequently, you should begin a vision your product on the, on the shelf of Walmart. A vision your product on the shelf of Tilbury. A vision your product on the shelf of Tesco. A vision your product on the shelf of this big, amazing organization supermarket selling your product. If it's a food item, just have that vision. Have it in mind. See that product. See yourself traveling and see your product right there on the shelf. Have a vision. Let something drive you more than money. So that when you're having challenges in the business, you will continue. Why? Because of the vision you have. You will continue. Why? Because of the vision you have. Vision make you to bear anyhow. Someone said, when you know why, you can bear anyhow. When you know why, you can bear anyhow. When you do know why, when you don't know why, you can't bear the stress. When you don't know why, you can't bear the challenges. 
When you don't know why, you can bear the issues you will face in the business. When you know why, you can bear anyhow. When you can see the vision. When you have an idea of what you want to see in future. When you see your product on Walmart uh, uh, shelf, you can bear the challenges of export business. So you must have a vision. The vision should be people-oriented. Your vision should have some characteristics. Number one, the vision should be people-oriented. Number two, the vision should be problem-solving. Number three, the vision should be prayerfully crafted. Number four, the vision should be penciled down. Number five, the vision should be your principal focus. So you must write the vision out. You must be very clear on what you want to achieve. Very, very clear. You know what? If you are not clear, you know, these are soft issues. They are soft issues, but you know what? Even though they are soft issues, they have killed some businesses. You know, I read a book some time ago, and I would recommend you read this book. It's called Built to Last. Built to Last was a question a lady asked the writer of that book, Jim Collins. And Jim was trying to talk about a business, building a business from ground up. That's the course he was teaching in Stanford, building a business from ground up. A lady stood up one day and said, Jim, I'm tired of this course. This course, building a business from ground up, you are using Walmart, Boeing, HP, Johnson & Johnson. You are using big companies that have been, to, to give example, in your all that analog, this is what you are using. He asked the question, how do you know that a business that starts today will become a visionary company tomorrow? How do you know that this business will outlast the business that started it? Jim responded, I will get back to you. It took him six years of research and it became a book, Build to Last. And the book, book said, they discovered that company did not outlast their owner. Company did not become a visionary company for 50 years. When they did the research, the minimum company they used, minimum year was 60 years, 50 years rather. And they found out businesses that become very great, it's not because of their CEO, it's not because of their product, it's not because of their services. It's not because of their staff. It's because of their vision. It's because of their values. It's because of their core ideologies. Core ideologies. Their values and purpose. Values, who you are. Purpose, what you set out to achieve. Value, who you are. Purpose, what you set out to achieve. Write the vision. Have a vision of the export business you want to build. Have a vision of the export business you want to build. Let that vision drive you, not the money you want to make. If the money is the one driving you, when you're not making profit, you drop it. When you're not making profit, you drop it. When we started exporting finished product to Europe, a computer responded, and you know what? When they responded, we discovered in their response, their they dropped their pricing, we have to begin to drop our own price also. Why? Even though the, at that time it wasn't very profitable, we dropped our price. But today, it's over two, almost two years now. No, over two years now. We are much more profitable. Why? Because we continue. Even though at some point it was not very profitable. Because of the vision we have to be able to ensure our product is sold right there on the, in, the, in the shelf in Europe. So, let's have a vision. Very, very important. Be prepared to make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Learn to make mistakes. In fact, it's been said that progress comes after mistakes have been made and new things have been learned. The more the mistake you make in life, the more avenue to learn. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Why are people afraid of making mistakes? When I left banking, I make a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. About 10 years ago, a lot of mistakes. A lot of of mistakes. Why? Naivety. And that's why I recommend you get a mentor, you get someone to work with. Any business you want to do, have a look at someone in it that can advise you. You might have to pay for that service, but it's worth the while. Learn to make mistakes. When you have a, a person, a, an advisor working with you, you reduce your error rate. It does not mean you won't make mistakes at all. You just reduce your error rate. Reduce your error rate. Reduce your error rate. So it's very important. Now, as you prepare, if you are preparing to exit your job, remember we are transiting from paid employment to self-employment in export business. Here is my take. Don't forget the place of providence. Seek God for guidance. Meditate on the scripture if you are a Christian. Have faith in God. Obey your intuition when you are taking decisions. And depend on His grace. I'm not talking about preamble. Preamble. 
Now, as you transit to export business, remember the world have moved from the age of gathering and hunting, and it moved to the age of to the agricultural age, then to the industrial age, then to the information age. We are now in the creative age. Your product must have in it a lot of creativity. Your product must have in it a lot of creativity. Your product must have in it a lot of creativity. You are going to compete in the global space. You are going to compete in the global space. Remember, in that global space, mediocrity is not allowed. There are some products that will sell well in Nigeria. If you take it to Europe and America, nobody will buy it. Why? Because of the, 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 the excellence they uphold in that environment. The excellence they hold in all in that environment. Those products will not sell even though he's selling in Nigeria. So you must be very creative in the product you want to sell. Now, still on preamble, three things must characterize this business if you are going into export business. You must have passion. You must have talent. The product you want to sell must have a market. Passion, talent, by talent I mean gift. You must be able to produce the product. You must, you must, you must be gifted in doing that business. The reason is this. It's, when you are gifted in what you do, it makes you unique. It makes you different. You are able to come up with innovation, creativity, new ideas. Because you love what you do. Passion about it. And then the market. When you have talent or gift in something without passion, but you have market, there is gift, there is a market, there is no passion, you have a job. When you have gift or talent to do something, people are willing to pay you for it, but there is no passion, you have a job. When you have passion for something, you have gift to do that thing, but there is nobody willing to pay you for it. You have a hobby. Passion plus talent minus market, you have a hobby. When you have passion, you have someone willing to pay you for it, but you don't have gift to do it very well, you have a dream. You are just daydreaming. To have the work you love, to have the business you love, to have the business that will have future, talent, gift to do it, skill to do it, Passion to keep you going when nobody is interested, when you are not selling the way you should sell, when you are not able to get buyers easily, when it's taking you a while to get buyers, and then market those that are willing to pay, those that are willing to pay, those that are willing to pay. Those three, are, those three qualities are very important for you to be able to get this business through. Still talking about preamble. I'll be talking about prospect tomorrow. I'll start with preamble today. I have two things to talk more about preamble. Money. 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 When you're going into business generally, including export business, don't focus on cash. Because money, economic total, is a medium of exchange. Whatever you have in exchange for what you want is money. So in my opinion, the highest level of money is credibility. Consistency of result. Show your sample of your product. Let people see it. For you to raise fund, let them see a sample of what you want to sell. Credibility. Number two, companion, relationship. That, those are the things you should look out for to be able to do the business. Relationship. Number three, character, consistency of conduct. Number four, competence. Now, being able to do or produce the product or get the product. Credibility, companion, character, and competence are more important than cash. They are called the intangible money. And these four intangible money have the capacity to attract the cash you need in that business. So don't let yourself be bought down and be and unable to take steps because you think you don't have cash. Cash is the lowest expression of money. Cash is the lowest expression of money. Cash is the lowest expression of money. Money is value. It's intangible. Money is value. It's intangible. Focus more on credibility, the intangible money, on companion, the intangible money, that's partners, on character, the intangible money, and on competent, the intangible money, and I can assure you, I'm talking from a practical point of view, you will attract cash inevitably if you have all this quality of money. I will stop here today, and the series we are talking about is transiting from paid employment to self-employment in export business. I'll continue from here tomorrow, and I'll be talking about prospect. Today we've talked about preamble, talking generally about business and with particular interest in export. Tomorrow we'll now be talking about prospect and then we'll take it off from there. Thank you very much for listening. For those that are able to log in and able to um, share it also, I'm hoping this will be an amazing and interesting journey. 
especially for those of us that are at work right now, that you are in paid employment right now, and you are looking for a way out, and you are looking for how to transit, I believe it will be a very interesting one for you. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.